Welcome to the Wyoming Women's Business Center's 2021 webinar series. Today's presentation is Seven Options to Access Money for Small Business. I'm Christine Langley with the Wyoming Women's Business Center, and I'm going to be your speaker today. You'll notice the Zoom webinar bar on the bottom of your screen or top, kind of depending on how you've oriented your screen. I just want to call quick attention to the questions as well as the chat panel. If you want to communicate with me today, I'd like you to use those um, because everybody is muted just to decrease our background noise. Immediately following this presentation, a survey is going to launch, and I ask that you just stay on the line for a few extra minutes, probably less than two minutes, and complete that survey because it just provides us and our funding partners with a lot of valuable information. All right, we're gonna get started today with just some quick information um, on the Women's Business Center, and then we'll dive right into our topic on options to access money. And then I'll finish up with a Q&A if anybody has questions for me at the end. All right, so the WWBC, for those of you that are new today, we are a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to enable and empower Wyoming entrepreneurs. And of course, we have a special emphasis on women. And so we do our work through three distinct programs. The first is our business training and counseling program, which is always free. The second is our microloan program, and we offer microloans anywhere from $500 up to $50,000, and that's for businesses that have been denied from a traditional lending source. So we don't compete with traditional banks. And then third is our Artist Development Center. And we actually run that in conjunction with our Works of Wyoming store in downtown Laramie. But what I really want to get across to people is that what we do at the Women's Business Center is we actually specialize in micro enterprises. And so what's a micro enterprise? Well, it's a business that typically has less than six employees, even at its height, right? The majority are, are usually one or two person businesses. And these businesses were able to launch their company for under $35,000. So these are businesses like yoga studios and hairstylists and in-home daycare providers and marketing consultants, maybe cleaning services, um, small food businesses, right? These are examples of our clients. All right, let's dive into our topic for today. So first up, um, access to funding is a term that is used in economic development circles, and it really is just a business term that means finding money for your business idea or business expansion. And so it's probably the number, this question that I um, have on the screen here, accessing money, grant money, will fund my startup business because I am dot, 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 right? It's the number one question as someone that works in economic development. It's the number one question we get. How can I get money for my business? Or truthfully, the question is, how can I get free money for my business? And what I find is that often the truthful answer is not what most people want to hear. So much so that sometimes I find a business owner getting referred to lots of different organizations across the state in their search for money because no one wants to be the one to give them the honest answer. All right, but I'm not here to sugarcoat the truth. I'm really here to just educate business owners on the reality of funding. Because if you go into your business understanding the reality and what your real options are, it's actually a much faster path to success. And it's gonna be a lot less frustrating. So before I dive into all the different various options that I'm gonna to cover today, I wanna to just bust this myth right out the gate because I hear it over and over. And so again, it goes something like this. I'm a woman owned or I'm a minority owned business. Isn't there free money or government grant money available for me to start my business? Or it sounds something like this. My business is really gonna help this community. And it's a major need in this community, a major void. So isn't there free grant dollars for me to start this business? So I really don't know where this myth comes from. Um, because a lot of people seem to be under the impression that there's free money out there for business owners and really it's the business owner's job just to find it. And while there might be some small grants available, and when I say small, I mean less than $2,000, right, that could pay for maybe some specific products or items related to your business, I can assure you that there is no federal government grant dollars that are available to fund 
100% of your startup costs for your for-profit business, right? Those grants just don't exist. Grant dollars are typically reserved for nonprofit organizations. And then securing those grant dollars, even as a nonprofit, is really competitive. And so while there may be some grant dollars that can make sense for some businesses, remember that you have to still meet all the stringent requirements of that grant. All right, so in conclusion, grant dollars are typically not a pathway to establish or grow most for-profit businesses. And so now that we've busted that myth, let's talk about what your real options are for accessing money to either start or grow an existing business. And just so I have a sense of who is on the line with me today, um, I want you guys to open up your chat panel and give me an idea of what type of business you're in. Can you just chat and say, I'm in the food service business, or I have a childcare business, or I'm a florist, or you know, whatever type of business you have. It's just always a good idea for me to understand what your business is, and it can kind of help me curtail my presentation here. All right, looks like we've got uh, marketing and branding, great. Looks medical supply, okay, education services, perfect. Terrific, so keep them coming guys and I'll just sort of keep an eye on that chat. All right, so first up, the most viable possibility for the vast majority of small business owners is what we call bootstrapping. What does that mean? Well, it means that you use your own money from your own savings account to fund your business, or you use money that you've managed to save out of your monthly income, right? And that funds your business. So sometimes entrepreneurs can actually borrow from their 401k. And of course, I never recommend that people quit their day job until they have a really clear path to profitability in their business that can pay them the income that is required for their household. And so if this path sounds hard, it's because it is. Right? Business ownership can have some big rewards. And because of that, the barrier to entry can be really steep. And the truth is that if this were easy, then everybody would be doing it. Right, Starting a business takes an enormous amount of effort and commitment. And most importantly, it requires risk. And so I always remind my clients, if they aren't willing to invest their own money in their business, then why would anyone else? Okay, the other thing that I have on this slide is an IDA program. It's a program that we have formerly had at the Women's Business Center. Um, and there may be some other programs out there where they are matched savings programs, where you can save a certain amount of money, maybe up to like $2,000 $2, for your business. And then that program will match that savings. So that can sometimes be another option. So is that grant-esque sort of, right? but it is a savings program. Okay, it looks like we got a few other um, radio station, interesting. Okay, design and production of clothing, um, accessories and jewelry. Okay, terrific. All right, so several of these definitely sound like micro enterprises, which is what we specialize in at the Women's Business Center. Um, but regardless of what size your business is, you know, this information is gonna apply um, because these seven options of funding is the same no matter what. All right, so number one, of course, bootstrapping. Next up, this can feel like bootstrapping because you're, of course, personally responsible for it, but the next step is utilizing credit cards. So just giving you a little history on um, myself here, my husband and I actually started our first business together back in November of 2000. And we did it by using our Citibank MasterCard. We purchased $7,000 worth of equipment to get started. I kept my day job to cover our household expenses and it was super scary and it was incredibly risky, um, but so is business ownership. So remember that credit cards give you that 30 day float where you don't pay any interest. And so in some cases, you may actually have the money to pay off that debt within the 30 day float. Of course, that would be ideal. Now, if that's not the case, then you're gonna to wanna to look for low interest credit cards, or you're gonna to wanna to utilize balance transfer cards to keep that interest rate as low as possible. 
And so do yourself a favor, be sure that you read all the fine print and understand what the credit card rules are. And if you need help, reach out to us at WWBC. We can provide some resources that help you navigate that credit card game if that's the direction you're thinking you're going to need to go in order to launch your business. Um, we may also have some options with our microloan program, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. That can sometimes be a good alternative to credit cards, um, but credit cards can definitely play a role. You just need to know what you're getting into and have a plan to pay those off. All right, so we've talked about the first two options, which are basically your own resources. And so now let's move on to the next most viable option, which is friends and family. Now, often when I ask clients if they have friends or family that could invest, I immediately get told that that is just not an option, right? And sometimes that's true, but sometimes it actually just comes down to our own pride and not wanting to ask because either you fear rejection or you really wanna just be seen by your friends and your family as doing it on your own, right? So I'm here to tell you from lots of experience that being a business owner requires you to get your ego in check, okay? So you're gonna be getting a lot of no's in the future and that's normal. And so it's the family and friends bucket is really the best place to identify money for your business idea because it's, it's that area of people that know and care about you the most. And so I always recommend that you start out with friends and family before you seek funding from other resources. And I also recommend that you prepare your ask just like you would if you were going to a bank, right? That means having a well-developed business plan and financial projections. And so this is also typically the part where clients kind of roll their eyes and they tell me that they don't have time to write a business plan and that if they wanted to write a business plan, they wouldn't be doing an actual business. You know, they want to be in business. They don't want to write about being in business. Um, or they tell me that they don't know how to do financial projections or they don't have a computer or they don't know how to use Excel, right? All of those things might be true for you. Some of them might be true, some of them not so much, some of them may feel really legitimate, but it doesn't make the need for an actual business plan or financial projections any less real. If you need help putting together a real business plan, and what I mean by real is a plan that actually explains how you're gonna legitimately pull this thing off and be successful, it's not the academic assignment that you might've had in school then that's the time to reach out to us at WWBC and we'll step you through that process. We even have a facilitated or a self-guided online course that you can take for free that includes a business plan builder in it. So by the time you get to the end and you've answered all the questions, you hit a button and it formulates this business plan, you know, already with a table of contents, right? We can counsel you through developing that as well as developing your financial projections. But you have to have those things down in writing in order to present to any kind of investor, even if it's your parent. All right, and then finally, if you're able to secure some funding from friends and family, regardless of what the amount is, it's important that you have that transaction documented. And I encourage you to use a promissory note as well as a payment schedule because my assumption is that this is a loan, it's not a gift. So there's templates that you can find online to help you draft a professional agreement. And depending on the dollar amount, you know, it might be worthwhile to consult with an attorney. So just because it's family doesn't mean they don't want their money back. And again, there's a difference between a gift and a loan. And it's really important that everyone understands the terms up front so that there's no confusion. All right, next up is crowdfunding. So this is an interesting tool for raising capital. Um, modern day crowdfunding really started back in 1997 when a band sent out an email to their 1,000 person email list, letting them know that they were gonna lose $60,000 if they went out on tour. And so it probably wasn't gonna happen. And the fans actually responded by saying that they should raise the money. And so fast forward to 2007, there was the launch of Indiegogo online, 
that was followed by the 2009 launch of Kickstarter. And really the rest is history. So there's three types of crowdfunding. The one most are familiar with is what we call a donation-based crowdfunding which really doesn't make much sense for small businesses, right? Most people don't want to donate um, to your for-profit business. It just kind of feels wrong. So that leads us to reward-based crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending. So if you want more information on reward-based crowdfunding, you'll find a few webinars that we've hosted in the last year on our YouTube channel. And we even have a reward-based crowdfunding partnership with the local crowd in Wyoming. And so if you wanted to launch a reward-based campaign, you could do that um, through the local crowd. And so again, reach out to us if that's something that you're interested in. Peer-to-peer -peer lending, this is similar to getting money from friends and family, but in this case, you just don't know this person personally, right? It's somebody that you found online. This is a negotiated loan between two people, and it can definitely be an option for funding. Again, you're going to have to have a solid business plan and financial projections in place so that this person that doesn't know you, that's essentially being introduced to you online, is gonna know about your business and believe in your concept and accept your financial projections. And then you're gonna make a loan, right? You're gonna get a loan from this person and the terms are up to the two of you. All right, angel investors. So let's start out by defining who exactly an angel investor is. This is essentially a high net worth individual and for those of you that don't know, high net individuals are net worth individuals um, is described as people that have a net worth of over $1 million in highly liquid assets, cash or cash equivalents. Most angel investors are looking to invest typically under a million dollars, and they primarily invest in businesses that are local or regional. And the reason they do that is because they like to share their knowledge and be involved in the business in more of a mentoring role. And they're typically looking for an equity share or they'll structure a loan. So angel investors are often associated with a group of investors because they want to pool their money into a fund and then lend together. So an example would be maybe 10 different angel investors that all invested $200,000 each in order to establish a fund where they can invest up to $2 million in various businesses. So certain funds are dedicated to early stage startup companies, but most angel investors want to invest once a company is already showing revenue. So you're not at the very beginning, you're actually showing sales. And the reason that they wanna invest at that point is because angel investors are looking for a solid return on their money. And they lend and therefore they're gonna to prefer to invest in companies that are already showing promise. So if you're early, early stage startup or just at idea formation, you're more than likely not gonna be ready for angel money. And with that, most micro enterprises will not be valued at a level that is gonna interest an angel investor. So if you've ever watched Shark Tank on TV, this is an example of angel investing. The investment opportunity is, is usually gonna be under $200,000 and most angel investors or sharks are looking for really favorable terms, right? They wanna make money off of their money. And if they can't see a clear pathway to do that, then they're not gonna fund you. All right, we talked about angels, so now we got to talk about venture capital. Venture capital money is similar to angel investing, but you can just add some zeros. These people or these funds, they're typically looking for larger investments, and they're pretty darn comfortable with risk because they're looking for major returns. And they're also typically looking for a major equity position. So again, micro enterprises typically are not going to qualify as even a prospect for a venture capital, you know, prospect or money. And the reality is that um, less than 1% of all businesses that apply for venture capital money annually actually get funded. 
So these are really fun stories to read about in Inc. Magazine, but for most of us, venture capital is just not a viable option. All right, so I'm gonna finish up today on bank loans. There's a lot of options when it comes to bank loans, but just like all my other examples, besides bootstrapping and credit cards, they're all gonna require a strong business plan and financial projections. So I really encourage you to start with those documents before you go and approach any lenders. Most of us have a bank that we use for our personal life, um, and that can certainly be a place to start. And you wanna understand that banks are risk adverse. So they're often gonna steer you towards a home equity line of credit if you're a homeowner, or they're gonna ask for a personal guarantee or collateral to secure a business loan. And so it's important that you understand what you're agreeing to before you sign anything. So again, if you have questions about this, you can reach out to us and um, we can help prepare you with questions for your banker. If a traditional bank denies your request, then there may be a lending opportunity through the Women's Business Center microloan program. Again, all lenders are gonna require business plans and that's where we typically start with clients as well. And then since I mentioned the microloans, again, this can be a solution other than credit cards. So we typically do loans that are under $10,000. That's kind of our sweet spot. So if you're plan, if you were looking at using your credit cards to finance your business, you may want to look into our microloan program before you go down the path of credit cards. All right, so this is just bonus information. I would be remiss if I did not mention some special programs specifically offered by Wyoming economic developers across the state. Um, so there may be some opportunities in your local areas for startup competitions that offer prize money. And there's also some small business grants uh, through the Wyoming Business Council or the state of Wyoming, um, maybe even uh, some special uh, revolving loan funds from local economic development agencies that you might have access to. Those can be other places that you can look. So be sure to reach out to your local chamber or a regional director at the Wyoming Business Council so that you understand exactly what their programs are and if those are a potential fit for your business. Um, remember that these kinds of options are never gonna fund your entire startup. But sometimes small amounts of money can help you gain some momentum and kind of get started with your business. All right, guys, I've left some time for questions. And so um, you can either put those in the chat or put those in the Q&A and I will take a look, give you guys some time to type some things in. I'm interested in hearing kind of where you're at in your journey. Um, if you're at the pre-venture stage where you're just kind of in the idea formation stage and looking um, at the different funding options and getting your business plan together, or are you actually already launched and looking to grow your business and you know, you're short on cash and need to find some funding opportunities. So you can punch in the chat or punch in the Q&A and let me know kind of where you're at right now. Are you pre-venture or are you early stage startup? or are you in growth mode? So kind of let me know as I go through some closing information. So the Women's Business Center is made possible through lots of partnership agencies, but our primary funding comes from the US Small Business Administration. And then that federal grant is actually matched with a state grant from the Wyoming Business Council. And then we have some other funders as well. So we're thankful to the support and guidance of all of our partners, and we look forward to the work ahead. All right, so it looks like I have somebody here in growth phase, terrific. And so from the information that you received today, where do you think your best option is for funding if you're in the growth phase? I'll give you some time to think about that out of those seven options. Um, I've got somebody else living in Evanston. What would be the Wyoming Local Business Council in Evanston? Thanks. I will hit you up with that information after this webinar. It's also on their website. If you just go to um, the website for Wyoming Business Council, they have all the different county representatives on there with their contact information. 
All right, guys, this is my contact information as well as our business counselor at the Women's Business Center, Jonathan Howdy Shell. So if you want to contact us directly, feel free to reach out via email or phone. And we're happy to work with you. So upcoming webinars, um, we host a ton of webinars on a monthly basis, and we've got a lot of recorded information on our YouTube channel. So I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, check out some of the other webinars there. If you're looking for specific business information on different topics, we have those sorted there. And you can go to our website at wyomingwomen.org, click on the training tab, and that will take you to all of our upcoming webinars. All right, I've considered family, but perhaps credit um, since I'm in flow and have the option to pay. Okay, great. So if you're already in a cash flow um, situation, that's true. You might want to look um, at credit cards, but if family can offer you money at a lower interest rate and it's a good situation for them, then I would consider that. Um, my husband and I have funded uh, some businesses um, for our children and the reality of the situation was that it was good for both of us, right? Um, I can't earn more than eight, nine percent, you know, on my money anyway. Um, I trust their business plan. I trust what they're doing. They can't borrow money at this point because of the tenure of their business. They can't borrow money at less than an eight or a nine percent interest rate. So it was a win-win situation for us to loan them money and make, you know, eight to nine percent off of that investment. So um, think about the different family options that you have. Um, once people amass a certain amount of money or a certain amount of wealth, they're always looking for positive investment opportunities because they're hard to come by, right? They may only be making four or five percent in the stock market. If they can do better with a peer-to-peer -peer lending situation or a family lending situation, then they may be open or interested in that. Again, my recommendation is that you make sure that you have everything in writing, you have a clear payment schedule, um, you have a third party, you know, possibly an attorney, look over all of that information. And so everything is on the up and up. And of course, don't be late making a payment to a family member. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to ask you to stay on the line for just a couple more minutes and complete this survey at the close of this webinar. Thanks, everyone, for attending, and we will see you next time. Have a great week.